Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized for the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus told them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those who they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and there are great ones of tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. John who asked, 
It's their mom. <laughs> oh, we're embarrassed. <laughs> but Jesus says, responds to them, which unfortunately in, in some places are interpreted as a threat. Are you ready to get baptized? Is that the truth? I am baptized? Are you ready to drink the cup that I drink? And it does. It could sound like a threat. We are able. And they do end up, the tradition of the church is that they don't end up being crucified. But I wonder if that's really what Jesus is saying to them. If that's really what this question is about. This third prediction of Jesus' death, you'd think that the disciples would have figured it out by now. They would have got it. But it seems that their experience, their idea of what the world is like, what reality is like, makes it impossible for them to really hear him. They live in a world in which people with power are at the top of the stack. They have authority, they have power. They may not be nice people, but there they are. And everyone else wants to get in close, wants to share in that power, share in that authority. That's the world that they live in. Not so very different, perhaps, from the world we live in. But Jesus is talking about another world. He's talking about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is not organized that way. But they're having trouble imagining that the world could be any different than what they've always seen, what history tells them has always been. Jesus speaks of a world in which the least are the ones that are most important. The, the end of the train, the very, the caboose, is the most important. That real power belongs to the weak, to the vulnerable, to the poor. And they look at this world around them, they go, uh-uh, can't see it, don't see it, can't be true. And so they're imagining that this one, their teacher, their Lord, who is so incredibly powerful, they look at him and they say, he is going to be the new one at the top. And when he is, the world will be a better place. And I want to be at his right or on his left. I want to be right up there leading this new world. Is that such a bad prayer to want to help lead a new world in which the folks at the top are not abusing their power, but are seeking to do what is right, seeking to care for the poor and the lonely, the sick, the dying? Is it so bad to want to be the one in authority in that kind of world? I don't think they're dumb. I do think, though, that they don't understand that the kingdom of God is not organized that way. I'm not sure what we believe either. What world have we seen where that was ever true? We're the poor. We're the ones that matter. We're the weak. The sick. The elderly. We're the ones that matter. What world is that? How do we break out of our customary view of what the world is supposed to look like? How do we break out of that historical memory pattern that we've had forever of how it is the world really works? Let's be realistic about this. Might be what they would have said. And what it is we certainly said. But that's our job as Christians is to show a world in which power belongs to the weak. Power belongs not to the ones that are at the top of the stack, not to the rich, not to the ones who control armies, but to the ones who serve. It's the folks in the kitchen 
is the folks who pick up the litter that ends up out here on the street. It's the folks who make sure somebody gets a bulletin or that someone who maybe is unfamiliar with the service gets a little help. Our job is to show that that world can exist and does exist. We may only be able to help folks glimpse it. We may only be able to glimpse it ourselves. But that's our job as Christians, is to show that power and authority are different in the kingdom of God than they are in the world outside. It's hard. It's hard. But it is our hope. And it's why we need to come regularly to worship. Because we need to be reminded of what that looks like. Otherwise, we're going to get suckered by what's going on there in the world. Oh, watch the ads on TV. <laughs> Dear God, I'll be happy when we get to November is past. It's very hard to live in a different world than the folks around you. But that is our call. So as we move through this week, to think about how can I maybe shine a little bit of that kind of light into the world around me? How can I help people see that there is a value to the poor? the homeless, to the sick, to the grieving, the elderly. How, how can I help people glimpse that? There are opportunities, many opportunities. Each and every day there are chances to show the world who really matters, to put our focus on the people that Jesus tells us are important in this life those who serve. And when I forget, which I am prone to do, what runs through my head is a wee editing, let's say, of an old political saying. Ask not what the kingdom of God can do for you ask what you can do for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.